Hello, what's up? Um, today, I want to be speaking to you about uh, empathy in the Bible. That's my topic I'm going to be talking to you about, empathy in the Bible. Um, and um, in it, um, it indicates many ways, um, talking about um, how empathy um, sort of relates to compassion, um, being low-key, um, and um, showing yourself how to be um, loving and caring for one another the same way you um, love the entire church. Now, last week on my previous messages, um, when I talked about um, Christians um, showing a little empathy, and uh, yes, I could be right, it's all about Christians being empathetic. Um, I have told you that word empath comes from the word empathy, which literally means the ability to understand and share the feelings of one another. Consequently, and therefore, we have to learn how to um, share um, somebody's feelings in the time of their own crisis um, and um, under normal circumstances and through trials and tribulations um, in a crisis like this. Even um, when you recognize something of what was going on, say for instance, we've had a horrific COVID-19 crisis uh, these past two years ago and um, it had been a very, very, very shaky duration then. Um, we've lost half of the people who suffered COVID. We've also lost loved ones. All the places also had to close down because of COVID. Um, we couldn't go anywhere. We had to remain homes and almost in complete isolation. Not And because of the fact we also had to stay six feet away from the people we really love. Absolutely six feet. All we ever did um, at that particular time was um, we just uh, pretty much um, do social distancing. However, beyond that, apart from what I have just said, I have also explained two different words. The difference here um, between um, empath and empathetic. Um, now, like I have said, empath is the ability to understand and share the feelings to one another. But on the other hand, an empathetic person means is somebody who actually experiences the emotions of somebody else, um, even especially physically affected by, by these emotions and possibly knowing the motivations behind the person's feelings or actions. In other words, um, empathetic people also have the common courtesy of, on which they have to do to sense body energies, vibes, and other es esoteric forces, and so forth. Now, now that I have given you um, two separate um, words um, in differentiations um, on one topic, I want to conclude the topic um, as far as what Bible says about empathy and, and as far as it goes and as far as the subject is concerned. Listen to this. The scripture refers to the quality of empathy, which we see demonstrated in several biblical narrators. Now, empathy is the capacity to feel somebody else's feelings, thoughts, or attitudes vicariously. The apostle Peter counseled Christians 
to have. And if you have your Bible or Bible app, please, I want you to turn into 1 Peter 3, 8. And it says, compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous. Now, the Apostle Paul also encouraged empathy when he exhorted fellow Christians to go to Romans 12, 15, saying, rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Okay, empathy is obviously related to sympathy. However, is narrower in focus and is generally considered more deeply personal. Now, the three words are as follows, compassion, sympathy, and empathy. All of that has to do with having passion, which is synonymous for feeling for another person because of his or her suffering. In other words, true empathy is the feeling of actually participating in the suffering of somebody else. Now, in 1 John 3.17, the Apostle John asked, if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Now, let me say this to you in a way um, in um, which um, you um, can um, try to uh, emphasize, emphasize it in your own words. Pity in this verse is synonymous of empathy or is actually related. No, no, no. I take that back. Pity in this verse is the opposite of empathy, which both require actions. As Christians, we are commanded to love our neighbor and to have intense love for fellow believers. Mark Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine and 1 Peter 4, 8. Though we have every intention to love one another, we often miss opportunities to relieve others' pain. That could be because we don't know of other needs or perhaps we are not showing what empathy means to each other. Now I want you to know first and foremost Empathy is the key that can unlock the door to our kindness and compassion. There are several examples of empathy in action in the Bible. Jesus was always sensitive to the plight of others. Listen to Matthew 9, 3, 6, Matthew 9, 36 and find out what it means. Matthew tells us how Jesus, when he saw the crowds, had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. On another occasion, Jesus observed a widow about to bury her only son. Sensing her pain, the NLT says that Jesus' heart overflowed with compassion. He approached the funeral procession and resurrection and resurrected this young man, Luke 7, 11, um, verses 16. Now, what I'm going to do is to read uh, a couple of Bible scriptures there. And um, at that point... Um, you then tell me what you think about this. This is very good. It says right here, now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain and many of his disciples went with him and a large crowd. And when he came, 
near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Verse 14, then he came and touched the open coffin and those who carried him stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. Verse 15, so he, so he who was dead sat up and began to speak and he pre presented him to his mother. And finally in verse 16 it says, Then fear came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has, rise, has risen up among us, and God has visited his people. So, having lived a human life, our Lord can, well, our Lord can and does empathize with all of our weakness. Mark Hebrew 4.15. This is the scripture you have to read for yourself. And if you do, please mark, mark it down on your comments right here. And with paraphrasing, please tell me what you think about the scripture you have read in the subject I am speaking to you about. And finally, the word compassion describes the deep mercy of God. In other words, God is the very best at empathy. Psalm 103, 14 says it in this way. He knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. He personally feels the pain of his people. Psalm 56, 8 from the NLT says, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. Now, to conclude this, how come, now let me ask you a question, okay? And I want everyone to hear this. How comforting is it to know that God records all our tears and all our struggles? How good to remember God's invitation to cast all of our cares upon him. The last scripture would be answered, would be found in 1 Peter 5, 7. And here is the response to that question in the scripture, in the Bible itself. It says, Be because he cares for you. I'm not kidding. Do you want to know why? God really loves you with all of your heart, with all of your soul, mind, and strength in the tough times and in the bad. And he really loves you. And he really wants to be the Lord of your life. So much for what is going on out there. And if you want to um, show the people tender loving care, then all you have to do is to show empathy with them. The same way nurses show empathy with their patients. Well, that concludes my study and uh, I hope that you've learned it. So you be blessed, take good care, and I'll see you again next week with a new message. Good night.